Here with North Carolina Sense University head coach Jerry Matt coming off of a 60 to 7 defeat at Duke. Can you talk about that game for us, coach? Uh, well, first of all, kudos to Duke. Uh, very talented team. Uh, probably the best Duke team we played since we've been here. Um, very talented, very explosive. Uh, got great strength levels. Uh, we learned a lot from the game for us as a program. Just we still got some work to do as a program, trying to get our athletes and trying to get to the to the caliber of, of that program. But uh, overall, really pleased with some of our effort in some spots uh, from our from our young men. And uh, just going to take that take that in and learn from it. Coach, could you um, maybe just uh, touch on a little more specifically? Because this is kind of a tough game to judge, but what were you able to take away um, on the offensive side of the ball as well as the defensive side of the ball? Well, we talked about getting better as, as a, you know, from what we played last year. And what you saw is I think we doubled our first downs. We had more yards offensively. We were able to score a touchdown. It's the first time we ever scored a touchdown since I've been here that we played Duke. So there were some positives on the offense side to build on uh, defensively. The biggest thing that you saw on defense was some strength levels. We had a couple of guys with double-digit tackles and some guys close to double-digit tackles. So we got guys pursuing to football, trying to make plays, trying to do the right thing, uh, just weren't able to close the game and continue to do that the entire game. But uh, there were some positives in the game. After the game, you said that uh, you thought there was going to be some really good teaching tape because of what happened on Saturday. Uh, what were you able to learn after looking at the film? Uh, you know, first things, just not from the film per se, but it was some toughness that we saw from our quarterback. He was able to take some hits and then steady go in there and steady continue to compete. Uh, Isaiah Totten, you know, he had the long touchdown run. Uh, really impressed with that. You know, we did a great job of, of blocking and he did a great job of finishing the run like we talked about. And then also on defense, the guys were, you know, Antonio Brown had a sack and a couple of tackles for loss. So some of those guys really showed, showed what they could do just from the film. And if they continue to play like that going forward in MEAC competition, we're going to have a chance to really make a run at it. After the game, you said um, that there were some things that this team did that this team, as much talent on this team as you saw in 15 and 16 against Duke. And we all know in 15 and 16 how the season ended if you guys mm -hmm. was conference championship. What does history tell you that it's going to be the same type of team based off the Duke game? Well, I think the talent is there. I think we had some talent in some positions. Some guys uh, were able to do some great things against uh, Duke on Saturday. Uh, but it's, it's like I've been saying all along, it's about coming together. It's about our chemistry gelling, and it's about us preparing and taking it one game at a time. Uh, Shaw's going to give us a great opportunity to go out there uh, against a crosstown rival. You know, they're a little bit more uh, on our level. So we'll see what, what happens on Saturday. Um, compared to 15 and 16, the day after, it's still pretty much the same. I mean, the guys it was, took a big defeat, but what was the mentality and the mood like when you guys met up on Sunday the day after? I mean, obviously, nobody likes to lose a football game because they work extremely hard during the off season in the summertime to prepare to try to win a game. But I think once they got a chance to look at the film and see their mistakes, they they see that everything is correctable, and that's one of the positive things. You know, guys were fitting the wrong gap at times, uh, a few misreads here and there. But you know, nothing was to the point where uh, it's not correctable. We were able to make it out the game healthy, which is always a good thing. So we, we're looking forward to this upcoming week. But you would say your guys. We can we well year in and year out after those non conference games they see the big picture. Yeah, I think we see the bigger picture. Isn't it? You know, all our goals are still right there in front of us. We still got a chance to play for the Celebration Bowl. We still got a chance to win the conference. Uh, it's just about taking it, taking it one game at a time, and, and seeing what and seeing what the future holds. You know, they learn a lot from the game, like they do in all the years. So they're going to be able to fix some of those mistakes in today on Tuesday, and it's going to be it's going to be a good good week. Coach, you mentioned um, you know, going to Shaw, playing an opponent kind of more towards your level um, with some of the guys that you have. What are some things in practice this week uh, on the offensive side of the ball you try to shore up and, and try to game plan heading into Saturday? We have to have great execution on, on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying to reduce, continue to reduce our penalties, make sure we don't have very many penalties in the game. We do not want to turn the ball over. Uh, we want to try to limit as, as many explosive plays as possible uh, from Shaw University. Uh, those are just some of the things that we're going to make emphasis on going into this week. You mentioned explosive plays. Duke didn't have a lot of explosive plays, but a lot of times their receivers and quarterbacks playing pitch and catch. Like receivers were mm -hmm. running free, running wild. Mm -hmm. What adjustments 
will be made or need to be made to kind of limit it moving forward? We just got to get our eye discipline better. You know, we, first time we play uh, another team and the speed and the tempo, some things that you do in practice you may take for granted. When you go out there against an a, a opponent like Duke, you see that you can't take some of those things for granted. So it's gonna, that's why I mean it's going to be a great teaching tool for the, those guys to understand that if you're more focused and you have great eye discipline, you'll be in position to make a lot more plays. Did it? Did having a lot of new faces on the back end kind of didn't help, probably didn't help much either. No, nah, it, it didn't help, but, you know, those are our guys. You know, so they got to learn and they got to they gotta move forward and grow from this uh, experience, and I think they will. You know, they, they did a great job coming in here uh, yesterday, watching film, trying to prepare for the opponent this upcoming week. Was it more uh, scheme thing or just mistakes you guys made or a little bit of both? Uh, a little bit of both. You know, sometimes we were outmanned or outmatched, and then sometimes uh, we were not where we were supposed to be. Uh, so it's always when you have a score like that, it's probably a little bit combination of both. You mentioned that score. Um, it, it's a little jarring to look at that score. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that guys are using that score as motivation going forward in the season, or has that already been kind of flushed from their minds? Uh, both. Uh, you know, we have to move on to the next game, so they do forget about that. You, know, you got to have a short memory span, but at the same time, you understand that it was it was what it was. So you know, you you got to understand, you got to make up for it and, and try to put forward a better performance next week. Other than, I mean, that's just after the game, so if I did, don't even worry about it. But other than Isaiah, who was some freshman, red shirt or true, who kind of stood out or made some play or caught your attention and then you went back and watched the film? Uh, probably, I don't know as many true freshmen, but some of the guys that are new to the roster, like Denario Lasseter, I think he had nine tackles on the game the other night, which was really impressive. Uh, Arthur Randall, uh, one of our defensive linemen, received some quality playing time. He's a new face to us. And we were impressed with Michael Zanders. You know, Michael, Michael Zanders and Jordan Fiato, uh, they did some really good things as well. Coach Jones is coming back here on, uh, on Saturday. Now, did you hire him or he's already, did you inherit him from the previous staff? Uh, I hired Coach Jones. Can you tell me about uh, just the relationship you guys have, like any thoughts when you first met him? You know, he's an eagle mm -hmm. from Durham, played here. Just kind of talk about you guys' relationship. Yeah, well, when I came in, he had just came off the state championship uh, win, and I was able to interview him. And from the time I interviewed him, I know I knew Coach Jones was the type of guy that I wanted to work with. Uh, he was passionate. He cared about the kids. Obviously, he was an alum, so he cared about the university. He wanted to see us be as successful as possible. And he did a great job in his two years working with us. He did a great job recruiting. He did a great job bringing in quality young men. And that's what I always knew he was going to do. He coached the Real McLean that year in 2015 when the Real was freshman of the year. He's just a quality person, really good football coach, but he's just a better person overall. Was he here one year or two? Uh, two. Who, who put it? Did you, did you reach out for him for this game, or he or Shaw reach out for you, you guys for this game? Uh, I think they reached out initially uh, for the game. So uh, I think that happened when he first got there. They were, you know, you're always kind of looking for a game to play. And uh, it was one of those situations where he had an opening and we were able to make it happen. Yeah, he's still pretty tight, I guess, with the staff. I mean, I've seen him over here mm -hmm. on the pro day. He was here walking around, and the guys right. were giving him a hard time about being in the building. Um, is he still pretty close with your staff and your guys, and that just kind of like that community feel with him? And he's right across town, but I'm sure mm -hmm. he still has a pulse or finger over here. Oh, yeah. What's going on. oh yeah, we're extremely close. You know, at the end of the day, uh, Coach Jones helped us build this thing. You know, he's a big reason why we're three-time MEA champions. You know, he, he was a part of the staff the first two years to help recruit a lot of the young men that we got on the roster now. So, uh, you know, we they still, and him, him, myself, and some of the other guys, they still go out to eat, family still know one another. Uh, so he, he's still an eagle, you know, no matter what. He's not only an alum, but he's part of this, this world as well. Um, advantage. Shaw because he kind of knows the ins and outs of you guys here or kind of advantage you guys because you he was on your staff and you kind of know his thoughts. Well, I definitely advantage Shaw. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Coach Jones knows the ins and outs of what we do. Uh, he was embedded deeply in what we do as a program. So, you know, more than anything, you know, I don't know all his assistant coaches personally, but he knows all our assistant coaches personally. So he has a, probably a, a little bit better feel on what, what we do and how we go about business. You guys, do you guys go on the field Sunday? You guys just watch film or, or do a walkthrough? Uh, both. What's the, what's the, compared to 15 to 16 game, I'm going to go back to that. How would it, how's that first Sunday when you come back on the field after that Duke game, 
this year compared to how it was in the first two years? Really much the same. You know, everybody's a little bit disappointed. Everybody's down. Uh, you got to kind of lick your wounds as you watch the film. You got to take some criticism from your coaches. You got to learn and you got to grow from some of your mistakes. Uh, the biggest thing is we always talk about trying to get back on the grass because when we get back on the grass, we can correct mistakes and we get a chance to move forward, put that game behind us. Uh, we run the guys a little bit, so we break a sweat, get the soreness out of them, and then we just move forward. Uh, you know, everybody was kind of down, obviously, because you don't like to lose. Um, what do you do to kind of pick their spirits up and, and snap them out of it, or is it okay to feel that way? Uh, it is for a little while, but one thing we do, we move on. You know, the best way to get over something is just to move on to the next thing. And, you know, it, you know, Shaw is not going to feel sorry for us. They're going to come in here trying to win a football game. So we put that to bed less than 24 hours. We played the game at 6 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, we were done with 6 o'clock 6 o'clock Sunday with practice. So when we left practice, the Duke was over with and we were moving on to Shaw. What can fans expect to see this, this weekend against Shaw? Uh, I think a good football game. I think you got two cross-town rivals, uh, very, very, two programs that are very familiar with one another. Uh, and it's going to be exciting to see exactly. Shaw University has gotten a whole lot better than, than they were last year. Uh, you know, we'll be excited to see exactly where we're at as a program as well. So it's going to be a really good game. Was it the pro day? I saw Coach Jones here. Is that the only day you've seen him on camp? I don't even know if you saw him today. Well, have you seen him around? Oh, yeah. I, I saw Coach uh, this summer. Uh, we had a, a radio uh, interview we had to do. I also saw him a couple of times this summer as well. He came over when they had a little downtime. Oh, here? Mm -hmm. Okay. I know last week you kind of touched on the relationship that you have with Coach Cut and some of the other guys around here. Um, do you feel that you are a mentor to Coach Jones? And if so, how much do you value that? Oh, no, I'm not a mentor to Coach Jones. You know, I think we feed off one another. Uh, I get ideas from him. He gets ideas from me. And I think we kind of feed off one another more than anything. Is this your first time facing, I guess it's facing the head coach who's on your staff? It is. It is. He's the first one that's left and it became a head coach. And that's why another thing, we're, we're really proud of what he's accomplished and what he's been able to do over there at Shaw. Have you had a chance to see Shaw on tape? And if so, what do they do well? Uh, you know, we've seen them a, a lot from this past this past game. Uh, they're really good in the, in the running back position right now. We're really impressed with uh, their running game and, and some of the things. Uh, Coach also has a, a really good receiver over there that we, we're really impressed with. They're able to throw the ball around. You can see, you can tell the picture is a lot cleaner than it was last year as far as the personnel. They seem to know what to do more. They seem to have more organization. It's Coach Jones' second year, so you know we wouldn't expect anything different defensively. He also has one of our former assistants, Coach Andre George, over there as the defensive coordinator. And Coach George has done a great job of uh, uh, creating turnovers on the defense side of the ball, very similar like what we what we try to preach on. They do a great job of trying to create turnovers. And Devontae Reynolds is here with us today. Can you talk about uh, him and what he's meant to the program? Oh yeah, Devontae was one of our first recruits when we came in the door in 2014. We redshirted him our first year, and for the last couple of years, he's been a staple of our defense. A very productive football player, uh, able to fly around, plays a lot of special teams for us. And uh, I think last year he was preseason all-conference, might have made a uh, postseason all-conference team as well. Uh, you know, he's just one of those guys that we're going to lean on as the season continues to progress to be a highly successful player for us. How big was the, uh, the Howard win for me at? It was great. It was great for the for uh, the entire MEAC conference to show the country that you know we play a quality brand of football and and our teams in our league can go out there and compete uh, against FBS teams at, uh, all over the country. Did you watch? It? I have. I, I watched the film. Uh, I think uh, Kaylee Newton is going to be a really special player in this league. Uh, the Duke game, uh, you know, it just it just showed us who we really were. You know, they're a big FBS opponent. You know, we didn't back down. It was just the small things that they capitalized on that we didn't, you know, getting better, eye discipline, and just making plays. That's what it come down to, just making plays whenever you can. Because football, is, it's kind of hard to get around the ball. So when you do, you got to make a play, you know, even if it's an in interception or a fumble recovery, you got to make it. And looking at the defense, is there anything, you know, with the score, that might be a little misleading, but were you able to take away you know, some either positives or some, some negatives, things that you guys try to work on here in practice this week? Yeah, there's always some positive. I mean, like I said, uh, we're a pursuit defense. So, you know, just running to the ball, just getting better at that, you know, making sure our checks are right because we're a check defense, you know, depending on the formation. It's just our discipline. I'm going to keep preaching that because that's what it boils down to, you know, um, 
just going out there and making plays, really. It ain't no cheat code. Just go out there and make a play, you know, whenever the ball is around you. That's all it is. When you say I just play with guys just like not making the right reads, like he's just looking all in the wrong yeah, place. Yeah, it's just, you know, sometimes the moment is too big. So you start getting in tune to a lot of things when you should just be looking at your man or making sure you're in your zone. And then, you know, a team like Duke, they're going to capitalize it. Six, 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 seven quarterback. He sees everything. Sean Wilson is a great running back. He sees everything. So you have to be in your, your zone or your gap to be successful against Duke. You said you guys are a check defense. You and you and Alden on, are on the back end. You're yeah. the most experienced guys in yeah. the system. So are the calls on you two guys only to put everybody in the right place? Uh, yeah, it's on me and Alden. We're on the back end. So depending on the formation, we make the check, you know, depending on the call. But yeah, me and Alden, I like having Alden back there too. You know, he helps me out sometimes even when I'm wrong because I have a mental bus. And Alden to get me right, same thing with him. So it's big for us with me and him to make sure we know what the checks are so we can let the corners know, the linebackers know, so they can tell the D-line and go from there. Not to single out. Uh, Alfonso and, and Demario, they're, they're new corners. Yeah. But because they are new corners, it, it was it kind of like a communication thing sometimes? It, it, it always is a communication thing because sometimes the stadium be too loud and they be so locked in on their technique or their man, they, they don't hear the coverage. So, you know, we're just going to keep going forward and continue to try to communicate with them both. You know, we're really big on them because they're our starting corners. You know, we're looking for them to make plays on the ball and wide receivers and even in the run game on special coverages. So we're still good on it. We're good. When you guys watched the film as a, as a secondary, was that the main thing, just to add this one in, in the Yeah, that was the main thing, our discipline, because uh, just speaking for myself, I messed up a couple of times just trying to play too fast. And, you know, quarterback kept it and scored for a touchdown. So that was on me. That was nobody else. But, yeah, just keep going forward on our discipline. You know, coaches always preach about playing fast, but we just was playing too fast, you know. And they got us a couple of times. Just get better going forward. Being a veteran guy, you've been in the program three years. You've played Duke twice. Were you hearing you play ECU that year? Oh, oh that was my red shirt. Yeah. Red shirt yeah. All those games didn't go your guys' way, but you, each year ended with a conference championship. What, what's the lesson you guys learned each year from playing a big game like that and then using it as motivation or, uh, or, or a teaching moment for the rest of the year? Uh, I feel like the big lesson is just staying together as a team. You know, all three of those games, nothing really went our way. But we all we got, so we have to stay together with each other. So once we get in the conference, we take the Duke loss, we lost before. We've been down before. So it's all about how we respond in uh, any situations. Like last year, FAMU game, we was down. And uh, we just rallied to win. And that's the big lesson. Just stay together as a team. You know, continue to pick each other up. I know you guys were in Durham. But what's the excitement level or the talk been amongst you guys this week to finally open up here at home? <laughs> it's always great to play home, you know. You get all your family members and everybody to the game. It's just the first home game, too. So I'm really excited. You know, we watch film on Shaw. You know, we feel like they're a pretty good team. We're a pretty good team, too. So it's down to execution now, and knowing that they kind of run the same offense we run, same defense we run. So it's going to be kind of good, kind of cool. And what have you seen out of them? You, know, you said you saw a little bit. What have you seen out of them specifically uh, offense to try to work out? Specifically offense, uh, they have a nice wide receiver. Uh, I don't know his name, but number seven, Travante Long, I think it is. Big, tall, physical wide receiver. Uh, nice running back, smaller than Tariq Cohen. Got a little burst, and they have a nice quarterback as well. So those are their guys, so we know what we have to do to stop them. Who's one watching film or through the walkthrough on your side of the ball? Who's one of the most vocal guys to, to kind of make sure you guys put that game behind you and move forward? Alden. Okay. Alden. Definitely Alden, by far. What are some things that we just kind of? Uh, you know, Alden is just Alden. Alden's going to say what he got to say. He don't sugarcoat nothing. That's what I like about him. He's going to keep it real with you. Like, if you're not in your gap or if you're making the wrong check, he's going to let you know. So you can go home and fix it or fix it right then and there. He's going to let you know when you're wrong. He's going to let you know when you're right. So that's a good thing about Alden. Does Coach Eastman, or well, I guess he's a secondary coach? Coach. Does Coach Eastman put a lot of that on you guys to, to fix the fix the mistakes? I mean, I'm sure he teaches yeah, some things too, but yeah. he put a lot on you, you and Alden. He put a lot on me and Alden, a lot on me and Alden. As soon as the offense come out in whatever formation he expect, me and Alden to check the coverage right then and there. That's what that's what makes it so hard sometimes because sometimes you don't see the, the whole formation and you slip up and you make a wrong call and then next thing you know we're in the wrong defense because you're not really paying attention. So Coach Eastman stresses us a lot and we watch a lot of film. Right after practice, he let us go to dinner, and we right back in the film room for about a good hour, hour and a half. So I like it to always watch film, you know.
Do you think this group so far through the, you know, the first weekend of this tough loss has the same mindset to put it behind you and, and roll forward like, like oh, the yeah. Kansas Yeah, we have the same mindset, you know. The pass is the pass, so we just focus on one game at a time, one game at a time, and Shaw is the next game, so we're focusing on Shaw, nobody else. A moment ago, Coach said that uh, all your goals are still out in front of you. What are some of those goals this season? Uh, you know, uh, outright MEAC championship. But with that, we have to take it one game at a time. So we can't focus on, you know, what Howard's doing, what FAMU is doing, what a t is doing, because they're their own team. We're our own team. So we just focus on what we have to do and accomplish to get there. Did, uh, did Coach Jones recruit you, or do you know him pretty well? Yeah, I know Coach Jones pretty well. He, he was uh, he was in there when I took my official here to Central. You know, I talk, I was talking to him a lot. He was cool, you know. And um, we frat brothers now, so we were real cool. You but talk to him. Oh, you good? Nah, yeah, I talked to him a couple of times. You know, we always make jokes because uh, he's real close with Darrell, and last year Darrell was my roommate, so we always talked to him a lot. Was he uh, like I said? I mean, you're. You're an eagle. He was an eagle. Is he really still passionate about the school, even though he's at another school right now? Oh, yeah, he's very passionate. You know, you see him up here a lot this summer. Like, when we work out, you see him coming by saying, what's up? Just, you know, because he was here when we first got the first ring. So he just continued to stop by. And everybody still talked to him, pretty close to him. You think that was weird that he's your first <laughs> opponent, but he was here throughout the summer <laughs> watching yeah, you guys? Yeah, I, I felt. I don't, I don't know how I felt. I was just like, uh, you a head coach, you all, you over here, you know what I'm saying? What y'all doing over there? But it was more than a coach. It was like, you know, he helped recruit us, so it was like he's going to be here with us no matter what, whether he's at Shaw or here, he's going to look out for us. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.